I'm on the central line again, but this time I'm way out in Acton. Acton has approximately 549 stations, so I should specify that this is East Acton. What really caught my eye here was these timber platform shelters. Now, if you're a long-time viewer, the colour scheme might have tipped you off as to the origin of these, but if you're not, let's get historical. This kind of timber platform shelter is very typical of the Great Western Railway. The Great Western Railway was founded in 1835, originally to construct a line from London to Bristol, but they soon expanded further, constructing a vast network of lines across the West Country and into Wales. In fact, they operated trains all the way up to Manchester and all the way down to Penzance. By 1921, they had 2,900 route miles, making them the biggest company in terms of track. That same year, the decision was made to amalgamate the railways of mainland Britain into four giant companies. The Great Western Railway actually survived with its identity intact, on the grounds that it was absolutely enormous compared with the other companies it would be amalgamating with. A bit like claiming that a whale amalgamates with plankton. It was quite a wealthy company too, thanks in large part to mineral traffic from Wales and the Midlands. As the old saying has it, where there's muck, there's brass, and nothing illustrates that quite like a mineral train. But it's also famous for its branch lines. Among railway modellers, the Great Western branch line is something of a cliché because they're so gosh darn charming. This line was originally built as the Ealing and Shepherd's Bush Railway, which was promoted by the Great Western Railway and approved in 1905. The aim behind this was to build a connection from Ealing Broadway, where the GWR's main line was, to the West London Railway at Shepherd's Bush. The West London Railway is now a part of the overground. There would also have been a terminus at Shepherd's Bush, with a subway connection to the Central London Railway station there. The Central London Railway would eventually become the Central Line on the London Underground, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. In 1908, the Central London Railway extended to Wood Lane, not far from the present White City station. This brought them very close to the route of the Ealing and Shepherd's Bush Railway, and so the Central London and the Great Western Railways got into negotiations. The Great Western abandoned their planned station at Shepherd's Bush, and the Central London obtained the right to run trains over the Great Western's line to Ealing Broadway. This was kind of unusual for the Central London Railway, who originally operated using a policy of not sharing other companies' tracks. This was authorised in 1911, and construction finally got underway in 1913. The Great Western did the actual building, and ran their first goods trains over the line in 1917. The Central London Railway supplied the electrical gubbins, and they started running their trains over the line in 1920. That same year, East Acton Station opened. East Acton was, for the first three years, the only station between Ealing Broadway and Wood Lane. I think it's quite interesting that it was effectively an underground station from the start, yet it looks so typically Steam Age. You wouldn't look at these timber-built shelters and think that they date from the era of streamlining and electricity. These colours appear to have been applied fairly recently, and are the standard colour scheme used by the Great Western in the 20th century. These colours were known as Stone No. 1 and Stone No. 3, intended to imitate the colours of Cotswold stone. 1 is the lighter colour, 3 is the darker. Presumably these would have been the same colours applied to the station when it first opened. North Acton and West Acton would be added to the line in 1923, and in 1938, underground traffic was heavy enough to justify the Great Western building a separate set of tracks for goods trains. In 1948, both the Great Western Railway and the London Underground were nationalised, the Great Western ceasing to exist. The current train operator is nothing to do with the old company. Stolen valour. These days, East Acton is fully 100% London Underground. But fortunately, TfL have a great deal of respect for their heritage, and there's no mistaking the station's origins for anything other than Great Western. Hello there, I hope you enjoyed this stony tale from the tube. If so, the like button down there is just itching for a click. For more on the central line, or indeed any line, please do hit that subscribe button. Thanks as always to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the central London line running right to my Great Western branch line. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.